what is the biggest value of having a business partner and are there downsides to that? Of course. There's downsides to being married, dude. You know, but there's upsides to being married as well. Look, I, I, I get stressed out, I get tired, Kel gets stressed out, he gets tired. You know, I'm sure I get on his nerves sometimes or say something that, you know, he doesn't like. I mean, that's just, I, I do that with my wife, well, you're just you know, never like be fully on the same page all the time. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 I mean, I would say that we're on the same page 90% of the time, 95% of the time, but there's going to be times that we're not on the same page, you know, um, the whole yin and yang thing, I think works really well with me and Kel because 95% of the time we are on the exact same page. Right? There's certain things that I don't really care that much about that he may care about. There's certain things that he might not care about that I care about, right? But I think that's a, a good partnership to have. I will, I will tell you, there's plenty of times there's stuff that I haven't thought of that Kel thought of. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea, mm -hmm. right? And so having two heads looking at the same issues and having a, a little bit different of perspectives and different life experiences, I think do enhance a business or add value to the business but yeah it, you know in, in, in any case you just want to sit up taller than me i do think that there's um a lot of pros to it there's cons to it but there's pros and cons to everything there's pros and cons to instagram there's pros and cons to facebook there's pros and cons to you know uh, uh, uh being married you know having kids you know with with every thing that's good there's going to be some bad to it that there's a little bit of bad to it you can find good to it as well just depending on where you choose to focus right so I'm going to be completely real with everybody on business partnerships. Most people, we've talked about this in one of our groups, and it's how I've, I've always felt about it. Like when Suman said that the other day, I was like, bro, I literally put that in my book. Most people take on business partnerships for the wrong reasons. They take them on because of these insecurities. And I've done it, right? I've had failed business partnerships. I've had problems in our current business partnerships. I've had, you know, like we've had our disagreements, um, but... And it's also something I learned in, in marriage counseling too. Dependency breeds hostility. Okay, and what that means is like if you're dependent on somebody for something, you don't feel that great about it. And if they're dependent on you, they don't feel great about it. And guess what happens? Resentments are harbored, right? So when you take on business partners for the wrong reasons, there's gonna be dependency issues and then there's gonna be hostility issues. So at the end of the day, man, like I think that uh, if I could go back, I mean, of course I would do things differently, but it's because I've learned and I've grown from those situations. So you're going to have to learn your own ways, um, but if you want to be really smart about it, why are you bringing on a business partner? Is it something that you can solve with just bringing somebody onto your team and not necessarily be a partner? Is it a role that you can delegate? Is it something that you can outsource? Like, do you really need a business partnership or are you doing it out of just an insecurity, right? Like, what are your strengths? Can, can you focus on your strengths, delegate the other things without having a business partnership? Uh, one of the things that's really great about Trevor and I is if me and Trev broke up today, he's gonna be fine. He's a motherfucking producer. I'm a motherfucking producer. Like, we don't need each other. We're in this thing because we know we have strength together, but we can also go build pretty great lives individually. We don't have to, like, I'm a great networker. He's a great networker. I'm a great sales guy. He's a great sales guy. He's great at building culture. I've learned a lot about building culture. Like, I can get people to work for me. I know there's a lot of people who love working for me. There's some people that don't. He's got other people in company that love working underneath him. You know, and so, like, we have figured out, like, dude, there's a lot of strength in, in what the things that we are aligned on, and we're not dependent on each other. And that's what makes our partnership so great. It's, that's just the fact of the matter. I mean, we've brought up other business partnerships because, like, we're like, hey, dude, you could run this company. We're going to give you shares, and, and it's been worked out great. But we've identified what we need that role to be, what mm -hmm. those shares are going to be, what those duties are going to be. We put it on paper, get the operating agreements. Like, we get all that stuff done now because we haven't always done that in the past. We've had to redefine some of our partnerships agreements and it's been a little bit messy, uh, but we had to get through it because it's for the greater good, right? And we don't want those resentments festering. Um, so I would say like be, sm be smart about it, like figure out why you want that business partnership. Make sure it's not just some insecurity of yours. Make sure it's something that you can't uh, delegate, something that you can't bring in on your team. Um, and then if it is like, dude, we just are more powerful together. We can do bigger things together. Cool, get it all defined. Make sure the roles, everything are defined, and then execute on that partnership. Just piggybacking off of what Kel said, in terms of finding a partner, like, do they have a skill set that brings value to the business at this point? So, for instance, 
if I'm a marketing guy, uh, a website and marketing guy, Kel knows, let's say, nothing about website and marketing, but he knows a lot about sales, right? That might be a great partnership because he gets to focus on one side of the business, which is sales, mm -hmm. and I get to drive in the leads. Maybe you don't have the financial backing to pay a marketing company five or $10,000 a month or whatever it is to help you start the business to start generating those leads. So you find somebody that is good in their industry, whatever industry that is, and you partner with them and give them equity to do it so that you're not having to pay an expert to do those things when you're cash poor starting a business. Mm -hmm. But if you have access to capital, then you could probably pay that same individual to do what they would do for equity, right? So either they put their time in as an investment for equity or you pay them and they have no equity and you get to retain full ownership of the business long term, mm -hmm. which is probably, you know, the right thing to do in most cases. In some cases, it's not, you know, it's up to the individual to determine that. I would make sure that you find somebody that has a skill set that could be value, valuable to the business outside of your, outside of your skills. I could stay at the office while Kel's in Vegas. You know, next week he's going to Mexico for a week. You know, it's not like the owner's just gone, right? Because mm -hmm. there's still ownership presence because I'll still be in the office, yeah. right? So there's still stuff that we can kind of push forward and move forward. Or if there's a meeting that needs to be had and he's out of town, then I can go ahead and take that meeting. Or if I'm out of town, then he could take the meeting. So in a lot of cases, divide and conquer is huge because yeah. we could we could represent easier accounting in two different places on the exact same day. Mm -hmm. He could be in Vegas like and I could be in Dallas, yeah. but yet we're representing the same company. And so we're able to do twice the amount of networking, right? In a lot of cases, we go to the, some of the same events and we don't even sit next to each other in a lot of cases, right? Kel's yeah. over there networking with a group of yeah. people. I'm over here talking to a whole different group of people. And so if there's a, a hundred entrepreneurs, I now know 15 or 20, and maybe he knows 15 or 20. Hey, I met this cool guy, he does this, dude, we need to chat with him. Oh, I met this guy, we need to chat with him, mm -hmm. right? So our presence is felt uh, in, in these groups far more than just if one of us showed up, right? Well, for us too, we're multiple business owners, right? So yeah. like if you read that book, Rocket Fuel, where it's like visionary and integrators, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, like, um, you got to understand too, if you're like the visionary, you might need someone to be that integrator and it is worth giving sure. up some ownership and having them be your partner. Like Trev's kind of visionary of, of real business owners and I'm doing a lot of integrating in the, uh, for that as well. Um, I've been a huge visionary for like easier accounting in our accounting company and I brought him over to help me be an integrator in that. Um, and so, and so like we're both visionaries and kind of integrators in our own sense. But like, if you're like a very uh, very passionate. You got a cl very clear vision on your business and what you want it to be, and what you want that culture to be, and what you want it to be for your your customers, and what that product or that service is. But you're just like you're doing all these things that are visionary roles, but you don't really have that person, that integrator, like really fine tuning things and holding people accountability and building those org charts and those spreadsheets and all those things. Like maybe you do need an integrator, and it's worth giving up some ownership on that. Mm -hmm. um, but typically. You know, and, and that's probably a good book for people to go read is Rocket Fuel. If you are thinking about bringing on a business partner, because um, maybe an integrator is not a partner, but there's a profit share model in place because you've already gotten the business to a certain point and you just need that integrator uh, or vice versa. And so that's probably a good book for people to read as well because it'll help you kind of understand like if you really do need a partnership mm -hmm. um, or if there's other ways to do it without being a coming a partnership and, and maybe there's a profit share model that will work. So there's a lot of things to consider before you take on partners, but most of us just do it because it's like an idea and like that person was there and you can do this and I can do that. And I'm not good at this and you're good at that. And there's these insecurities, but like, and, and then, you know, what happens is like one person evolves and the other person doesn't. And there's all these resentments. It's just, it can get really, really messy yeah. when you do it the way most people do it, you know? And so if you're watching this and you're thinking about taking on a partner, like, do a little homework, do some research, do some reading, like really find out that that's the right move for you first um, and and how to get out of it if it's not the right move. Because sometimes you're going to think, okay, this is the right direction, but you just picked the wrong business partner. So mm -hmm. how am I going to get out of that, right? To where it's like not going to be this nasty divorce, right? Mm -hmm. And there's ways to do that. It's just like when you exit a marriage, like there's ways to do it that's really not as nasty as other <laughs> as ways that it can typically turn out to be. And so 
Um, you know, like attorneys are really good at, at getting the husband and the wife to like feel like they deserve more, right? Mm-hmm. And before you know it, you're in Drag this two-year battle and you yeah. spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. right? And it's the same thing in business. Yeah. And I've been through both. So. Look, look, <laughs> in the very beginning stages of a business, partnerships are really, really cool because there's nothing there. You're still in the honeymoon phase of your business. It's all excitement. It's all projections. But when the money starts coming in, there's stuff to fight over, right? Let's say one person's comfortable making 200 grand a year and the other person wants to make a million dollars a year. That's when issues are gonna start happening because the one that wants to make a million dollars a year is gonna start doing far more work and the, and the other person, once they hit 200 grand, let's say they're both making 200 grand. One's still wanting more and wanting to grow and the other one's gonna start getting comfortable. They're gonna start taking vacations. They're gonna start not showing up to the office. Why? Because they hit a level of comfort, that threshold that, that they deem as good, right? And so, as Kel said, people outgrow each other, right? Maybe in the beginning you both said, yeah, 200 grand would be great. But when you get to the point of being valuable enough to make 200 grand, you realize, hey, I got a lot more left. You know, what else can I accomplish? We've already accomplished, and the other person might not have those same thoughts. And that's where separation starts happening is usually when the money starts coming in and then you have two totally different goals or visions of what you want to do long term for individual finances and for business finances. Because if one person's comfortable making 200 grand a year, he might not want to or she might not want to continue to reinvest money back into the business and maybe drop down to 100 grand a year to try to get to the point of making 400 grand a year. Maybe they just want to maintain rather than reinvest, but the other person wants to reinvest and is okay taking a step backwards for something more greater or something more later, sorry, and greater. But again, the issues will never be in the beginning, in the first year or two, you're in the honeymoon phase, just like you would be when you're first dating some somebody. You know, neither person can do any harm. But then when you start getting deeper into the relationship and shit really starts happening, just like a marriage, you start having kids and obligations, stress starts coming down on the partnership, right? Mm -hmm. And then you gotta figure out how to navigate those waters with somebody else. Do they have the same goals and the same vision? Will they push past those those points of fatigue and stress and wanting to quit and give up? Don't know. Mm -hmm. Some some may, some may not, right? Some some people do walk away from a business after six or twelve months, say, you know what, I don't want anything to do with anymore, and the other person runs off with it and ends up being wildly successful. Again, so if you're on a path with a partner Make sure you're on the same path as that partner. Like if you're going to invest into self-improvement, make sure your partner's with you. Because me and Kel have grown together as we've continued to invest into these networking or entrepreneurship groups so that we're each leveling up at the same time. We're taking on some of the same challenges. We continue to be forward thinkers and figure out how we can continue to grow our business even though we bear a lot of stress. We know taking on more means more stress for us. Not a lot of people are willing to take on the stress that we take. That's just the truth. So these are all things that you kind of need to think about. Navigating partnerships is tough, but it definitely is possible. Mm-hmm. It, you, you just have to you know, understand the ins and outs of all possibilities, right? And if yeah. somebody, and again, if somebody doesn't want to ascend to a new level and they're comfortable making a couple hundred grand a year, then you know maybe you restructure things at that point. Instead of 50-50, maybe it's 75-25. And they can ride off into the sunset and make, you know, 120 grand a year without any work. Mm -hmm. But then you can go grow your business or whatever it is. But I would say the most important thing is, is make sure that you're growing at the same pace as your partner, right? Um, If you're reading books, listening to content, uh, or going to events, they should be listening to those same podcasts. They should be reading some of those exact same books and going to those exact same events so that they're getting the same information that you're getting and you guys can be synced up, or you ladies, whoever it is, can be synced a little bit more because you're putting the same information in, so maybe some of those same thoughts can be created and then you can come together and figure out how to implement it into your business.